in YouTube. As you know, we are doing this for educational purposes. So those who are here in Zoom uh, are making deals. And those who are watching in YouTube are learning. Um, and probably there are also- In YouTube? Oh, yeah, we are live now. So glad to meet you all here. This is uh, another VC Shark Tank by in mind, the December edition, the last one for this uh, 2020 year. And uh, today we have uh, the set, the number, six investors and uh, seven startups participating. All investors match in the focus. The focus is uh, on the startups uh, on late seed or A stage with the founding team, uh, teams from uh, Eastern Europe or CIS region. And um, in the fields like uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, retail tech, and a few other industrial sectors. And uh, I want to start with, uh, as usually, with uh, introductions of the investors. And uh, first of all, giving that initiators of this uh, special edition of the Shark Tank were uh, e IIDF, uh, which is uh, Internet Initiatives Development Fund. And we have two investors representing it here, uh, Michael Shatrov and Vadim, Vadim Kazinets. So Michael or Vadim, can you please uh, introduce briefly IIDF and your investment focus so that uh, startup founders and other investors here can understand and maybe co-invest together with you? Okay, thank you. Um, I have, IIDF is uh, Internet Initiatives Development Fund uh, located in Moscow. Uh, we invest between uh, 50,000 to $3 million in uh, tech and software companies uh, from early stages all the way to Series A and uh, follow on uh, next rounds. Um, IIDF already invested in more than 400 companies and we also run our own uh, acceleration program uh, with uh, more than 800 startups as alumni. Uh, so we don't have a particular focus. Uh, me personally focus at ed tech, uh, educational tech and FinTech companies. Uh, also we're in trend all SaaS platforms and uh, B2B sector. Um, yeah, and um, so Vadim is responsible for um, working with companies, especially working with companies. He's a portfolio manager, and I'm uh, responsible for uh, marketing and scouting and looking for prospective companies to invest in. So that's it. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys, for these introductions. And by the way, if uh, any of other investors wants uh, want to connect with potential co-investors, just let us know and we will gladly introduce you to each other. And uh, I want to ask uh, to make a short introduction, Oscar Stachowiak from the Untitled Ventures. Oscar is, uh, I think, uh, the most uh, uh, regular participant in our Shark Tanks. So uh, Oscar, please, um, Mick is yours. Hi, hi guys. Uh, uh, excuse me for not having the camera. I had an accident, so I'm in bed, uh, at least able to talk. Uh, so the Untitled Ventures, uh, we historically uh, uh, were self-funded. Uh, we came from an entrepreneurial background, an investor background, and we focused on Russia, Belarus, uh, Ukraine founders. And uh, we invested into 26 companies, had three exits going on our fourth exit as, as, as we speak. Um, and we, we had all sorts of companies, B2C, B2B. Um, and now we are launching a fund uh, focused on the same region, but specifically focused on B2B deep tech companies. And uh, our check size is would be uh, ranging from one to three million and anything up to uh, series A stage for this region. Thank you very much, Oscar, for your introduction. And uh, I want to ask uh, to make a brief introduction. Um, Alexander Zemlak, senior analyst at Leta Capital Fund. Alexander. Hey guys, hey everyone. Hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Um, yeah, so I'm Alex Zemlak from Letter Capital. Uh, we're a 
We're currently managing our second fund, which is a $50 million fund. Uh, the first one was 15, one five. Uh, so we're investing in uh, Russian speaking global founders. Uh, we invest at late seed series A and early series B, the average check size between one and 5 million. Um, we're baked by uh, entrepreneurs and our founder, Alex Chichawa, he is himself a serial IT entrepreneur. Uh, so we're looking forward to, uh, to hearing the pitches. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. And we have uh, two investors from Switzerland. So uh, at the beginning, I want to give the word to Yves Bauman. Yves is the founder and senior partner at Seven Capital Valor, which is a Swiss-based uh, family office. Yves, you are welcome. Okay, so it seems that uh, Yves uh, will, uh, is missing here. So maybe he will re-log in and join us a little bit later. And uh, last but not least, uh, Anton Antic, he's head of investment engine at InMind. Anton? Yeah, hi. Hi, guys. Thank you, Nelly. Thanks for having me. Actually, very nice to see lots of familiar places here, uh, faces here. And uh, we are partnering with uh, all of the guys here, uh, currently, currently being here with us as well. So I used to run operations for Veeam Software. Uh, you probably heard about it if you're in infrastructure software. Uh, I made an exit from Veeam some years ago. Then I started investing uh, myself as an angel investor. And then we joined forces with Nelly and we are currently aiming at running consolidated investment rounds, mostly for at this stage uh, focused at the earlier stage startups. So the check sizes are under 1 million that we're targeting, but we love to collaborate with uh, with the VC funds. So in case you guys, uh, startups have, have any ideas and you see some traction and you need help, we are more than happy to talk to you, not just from ourselves, but from the point of view of all our investment partners as well. So great to be here. Yeah, thank you, Anton. And indeed, collaboration is everything. And right now we switch to the part where startup founders will present. Just a short reminder to all startup founders here, please, First of all, you will have maximum five minutes for your pitch and then around five to uh, seven minutes for the Q&A with investors. And please focus in your pitch on your traction, on your business model and investment offer. And don't forget that you are pitching investment opportunity and uh, not uh, just participate in the um, competition. So um, I want to start with a really great startup from Spain, Spar Drone, and uh, there are two co-founders, Maxim Korobov and Artem Machado. Who of you guys will uh, pitch today? Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Artem and here is Maxim. Here is our team leader. And I want to introduce my company and uh, its dedication and technical achievements that we have. Our company was founded in the late 2019 as an R&D company in the drone, in the cargo drone sector, as an agriculture drones and uh, uh, deliver packaging drones uh, for logistics. Uh, at this point, we have uh, two models which we are working on. Uh, this is the H100. This is a heavy drone with uh, 16 engines and the MTOV maximum takeoff weight of 120 kilograms with uh, from with uh, 30 kilos of payload at this moment uh, at, now, at this moment we have now two working prototypes uh, both with about one hour of flying time uh, and uh, uh, we are now working on creating a hybrid motor on it so we can get from 20 minutes to one to three hours of flight time also we are working on uh, carbon composite body so we can uh, get uh, 10 kilograms more for the payload with uh, getting in the same 120 uh, MTOV. Uh, also, uh, with the, in February, we was in FEMA. This is the most important, one of the biggest uh, uh, trade fairs in uh, agro sector. It was in Zaragoza. And uh, there was a lot of uh, interested people in uh, the H100 uh, machine. Uh, we are still in touch with our potential clients. And once the machine is ready, which we think is going to be uh, the end of the uh, 2021 year, uh, they are very interested in uh, getting these machines. Uh, the second machine is the L25. It's a mobile platform of uh, drone which uh, can carry 10 kilos of payload for 20 minutes. Uh, 
it's fully electric and uh, this, mo this drone is now in the final phase. So we have already five sales and five drones delivered to our clients. Uh, also, uh, we are now uh, negotiating with over seven potential buyers, which we think this year we're going to finish about two full sales because we are in very advanced state already. And we have four machines, 95% uh, of, uh, of our finish it, and about eight machines. Now we have uh, the materials to build uh, eight more. Uh, also, uh, we uh, tested our machines and we did uh, some seeding and some fumigation uh, in, uh, before. In Spain, we did about 16 hectares uh, with seeding and uh, we did 70 uh, hectares of uh, spraying uh, uh, liquid to, uh, to spraying herbicide. Uh, also, we are in a couple of projects too with uh, companies from here uh, as the hybridization, the H100 with a specialized company uh, to put a hybrid, hybrid motor inside the or big drone. Uh, uh, other company which we are collaborating, they're using the, our L25 uh, model to put uh, security, uh, uh, security, security on board computer in, in it so we can fly inside the urban areas. And uh, also with them, we are collaborating with the Polytechnic University of Valencia uh, to get a license to fly inside the city. Uh, we are working them with uh, for a long time, and now we uh, very close to get the uh, we are we're getting close to get the license to fly inside the cities, and it's uh, going to be a very we're going to be the, one of the first companies so who can fly a heavy drone inside the urban area. And uh, give my, the word to Maxime so we can mm -hmm. present. Right. Thank you, guys. Um, in brief, the idea of this business is to create business in the fast growing sector of uh, innovative economy and uh, to arrange machines application in the huge sector of agriculture and uh, logistics. And to use obvious advantages of the drones over heavy equipment in any industry. Why Spain? Uh, because here we can find large agricultural sector, not only in Spain, but in Southern Europe and access to European Union market. Um, we can find developed technological potential here and possibility of uh, some products localization. Um, young, talented engineers here, I, uh, they have uh, low wages on the background of uh, high unemployment. The country has influence in Mexico, Central and uh, Southern uh, America. And uh, we have uh, here possibility of uh, obtaining grants on uh, the level of Spain and European Union. What are the directions of investments? There are three. In terms of models or machines, we have already drawn L25 reported by Artem right now which is ready for mass production and the five pilot drones of this model have already been sold. Um, we have to complete the development certification and preparation for mass production of a new model, uh, H100, which means heavy, 100 kilos of uh, maximum takeoff weight. And uh, to develop a new mono wing drone model for long range logistics. Um, in terms of production, uh, we needed to hire IT personnel, pilot engineer, yeah, uh, test equipment, uh, assembly line, uh, to arrange certification, licensing, etc. And what are the uh, business models? To develop and manufacture drones, sale uh, and the technology, sale of drones and technological solutions. Second or second, manufacturing sale and transfer of part of drones to a uh, drone as a service company. And third, sale of uh, drone business or IPO in, in three, four years. And afterward, to reinvest part of received funds for development of spacecraft uh, surface, space surface, so multiple use. And the investment may be done in form of cash-in for the amount of Euro 1.4, which is 
clearly calculated for 24% of the company's capital. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Attention. Thank you very much. Um, the time is over and uh, let's better switch to the questions from investors. And by the way, I want to ask investors, don't also hesitate to give your feedback. So not only questions, but if you think that something in the pitch should be improved, amended, or was lacking, don't hesitate to give your straightforward opinion. It will be treasurable uh, advice from your side. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so I have the first question. Um, just to check and uh, can, can you tell more about your potential or your uh, nowadays customers who are they or is it private sector or a governmental sector right now it's <clears throat> so a, it's a private companies uh, we have uh, two sales for uh, free sorry free sales for a private uh, agriculture who want to use these drones one is going to be a cedar which is delivered and two for spraying and uh, we have uh, other drone, which, as I said before, was sold to the company which we are collaborating with to put uh, the, this security piece inside. And uh, the last one was sold to one very big company, CTL, called here in Spain. They use the drone for fumigate uh, to fight the mosquito. And uh, the other negotiations are some kind of so, uh, more companies. Uh, I think four of them are companies, and the other. The other, the, the other three are private uh, agriculture. And uh, also, uh, ju just another question. Uh, do you have some specific problem that you are solving for your customers? And uh, why, are you better, why are you better than your uh, competitors? It's the price. We are 30% cheaper than our Chinese counterparts which is a very big deal knowing that the machines are made in, made in Spain. They are fully built here. Also the batteries, we use uh, Tesla cells, but we, we put, uh, put them as we want. And also the quality. We have a, a lot of quality control because we use a European terms of guarantee. Every drone we sell, we give two years of warranty. And we, are, uh, we need to be sure that the machines are going to cover all this uh, time flying. I have a question. This is Oscar. Mm -hmm. um, within the drone space, although I know you, you, you're not into uh, delivering uh, a Big Macs, but it's just an example. The reason why a Big Mac is not delivered by a drone is because of safety. Um, and uh, that being said, what kind of safety features you have? Also, in terms of regulation, because you mentioned, um, I believe it would probably be vision light line of sight, um, a, a, a regulation that you would be applying for first. Yeah. And how does it work in Europe? Uh, because from my understanding, the EU hasn't passed a regulatory uh, uh, mandate yet, due, and it's been delayed due to COVID. So if you can um, elaborate on this, please. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we are in Spain. We have the most restrictive uh, uh, governmental uh, aerial controller than in most of the uh, EU. And uh, EASA are now getting more freedom to use the drones. Uh, what you said, uh, the drones are not flying now inside the cities because of this uh, security issue, which we are now approving and we are now working with the University of Valencia and this second company, which is called Avionica, which are putting the secondary autopilot to ensure the safety of the operation. Uh, in this case, uh, we are working on putting the parachute on it as, a, as one possibility, and also this uh, uh, electronic security system, like a geo fence or uh, secondary autopilot in case something goes wrong, you can land the drone in case the primarily fails. And uh, in our sector as agriculture, uh, in, in Spain, which is most, one of the most restrictive countries to use uh, flying machines, uh, AESA uh, don't, uh, don't require a lot of safety equipment to use this drone. And uh, the only thing we have to change for 2023 is just to put an electronic device which is going to send the, 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 the machine unique number to a police in case they see the drone and they check it out with the, with the special equipment. Uh, let me add a pair of words. Oscar, and uh, that, that was the reason that we have chosen L25 as 
um, 25 kilos maximum taper weight uh, due to reg regulation, you have to obtain only a pilot license to operate the drone. And you don't have any other restrictions now. And uh, that is a good opportunity to go to commercial sector with a light machine, but capable to, de to uh, deliver some missions. Thank you. Just one last quick thing. Uh, is it a copter or a plane? Copter. Copter. Okay. Yeah. Have it behind here. Us. I think it's. Yeah. It's it's a flying laboratory. So we was checking some. So up, up are here with the computer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions from investors? Okay, so probably guys, you will receive questions afterwards. And I just want to remind everyone that after this Shark Tank, as well as after all in each the Shark Tanks we organize, we send uh, to every investor the list of startups with pitch decks, with in mind profiles, etc. So you will have time to review and uh, to give your feedback later on. And right now, I want to thank you guys uh, from Spark. Uh, and right now I want to give a word to the startup from Italy, Xtor, and uh, co-founder of Xtor, Hlib Kanyuka. Hlib, please. Yeah, you can share your screen. Mm -hmm. Five minutes, don't forget. Uh, Hlib, we don't hear you. I don't see if you are muted or not, but... I don't hear any sound from your side. Can you hear me now? Hello? Hello, please go on. Okay, hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Hleb Kanyuka. I am a co-founder of Xtor. We are building a next generation payment platform for e-commerces. Uh, and uh, everybody knows that no e-commerce can exist without, uh, without digital payments. Uh, in digital world, we need to transfer money online. But uh, we have a lot of problems in this uh, sector that, uh, for example, this, this digital, problems, digital payments are expensive because the average commissions are really high. They're slow. It keeps seven working days to transfer money. They're really fraud heavy because uh, cards were not designed to the digital world. And they register a really bad user experience uh, and uh, because of high drop rate and the, the people are struggling to, to using them online. Xtor is a low-cost, low instant uh, payment solution for uh, for e-commerce world. We have a, a, our current dependent payment scheme uh, that we are cutting off the middleman to the, in, the, in transactions. And uh, we can transfer money instantly. Uh, it's safe because we are not required. We are not requiring uh, sensitive data to to use our service, and uh, we are now we are registering the fastest checkout on the market. Thanks to Xtor, uh, we can our customers just have to choose their items. They just have to insert a password. They have to look at the device camera, and uh, the purchase will be complete. Also, they can create accounts and. Uh, use different serving services using this. We have a business model, it's transactional. Uh, we are charging 1% fee on merchant transaction volume uh, with 2.5% per, uh, percentage on the uh, buy now, pay later service and uh, 0 for 35 uh, euros per uh, transaction for B2B money transfer. It's really cheap. Uh, we plan to go to market in uh, 2021 uh, with uh, um, B2B, uh, we will uh, reach the market with uh, direct B2B sales. Uh, also, we will use referral program partnerships. And to get users, we will uh, use uh, viral uh, growth, some social media marketing, and we also will be releasing a mobile app. The market size of the, the payments in Europe, uh, we are targeting 75,000 European e commerces with uh, annual transaction volume of uh, more than 600 billions uh, and we targeting uh, the, the customer side we are targeting um, 
millennials and uh, generation Z native, the digital native people. Uh, we are planning to reach uh, something like 0.4% uh, of the market. It will be it will give us an opportunity to 50 millions of uh, revenue in uh, 2024. Uh, our competitors are uh, the card technology providers, as for example, Visa and MasterCard, and then wallet-based payment services like PayPal or Satispay. I don't know if you want to know it. Uh, also, uh, we're competing with uh, payment banking transfer payment services like Ideal, Trustly, and Paywine is a new startup. They just raised some money from Seedcamp and uh, Triple Point Capital. Why we are better than them? That uh, we are cheaper. <laughs> it means more profit for merchants. It's higher margin for them. Uh, we have a fast and uh, checkout user experience. It's uh, we allow to people to buy in three seconds and instant money transfer. A difference that uh, that card, the classical card payments. Uh, we have we are two co-founders. One of them are me. Is me. I'm a tech passionate and creator of the project. I registered my own patent in 2017. We have uh, Kuker uh, CTO. He uh, he's a senior developer with 10 years of experience. Uh, he worked for uh, in the cybersecurity field and uh, banking. He worked for uh, for Kraken and uh, for for different uh, cybersecurity projects like uh, the military security of. Uh, of Italy. We are looking for uh, 460,000 euros uh, for 22% of equity and in convertible notes, if you prefer. Uh, we will use it for 70% for product development, 20% uh, for business development, and some uh, legal administration fees. Thank you. I'm finished. If you have some questions, please contact. Thank you. Please. Any questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, the the market seems to be uh, established, and uh, I assume there are well, many uh, players uh, in this field. Uh, you said you're going to compete them at the price, uh, but what if they reduce their prices too? Uh, do you have any uh, other competitive advantage or a special technology? Yeah. Um, can yeah. you tell us a little more about that? Please? Yeah. Uh, we are not competing only by price. We are competing by uh, with technology because we are using open banking and we are using uh, with our. We will uh, work with our uh, algorithm that is uh, allowing us to um, uh, first to cut off the middleman because all of these uh, players they are using uh, cards to transfer money. Uh, we are not using cards, and uh, also uh, we are competing with uh, the user experience that we are showing to, to the users because it's really easy to us. Uh, it's really easy to use us to transfer money. The the most uh, if they they can't reduce a lot of price because uh, they have a lot of uh, players doing transactions. To <laughs> instead of us that we can reduce in price much more. For volume and uh, also uh, we have our algorithm that uh, and our own permit scheme that allows us to keep the price low and uh, the transaction is costing plus nothing um, excuse me, but you still pay to the bank right for the transactions no uh, right. I use the bank then. Do, do you have some financial license or what's how you're managing the payments per se? Uh, yes, we will. Uh, now we are requiring a, a license, uh, an uh, electronic money institute license in uh, Lithuania. And uh, we will manage my, my money something like as a peer to peer, but it's for business. Uh, sorry. So you you plan not to accept cards. You plan to uh, well do the transactions in the, some uh, internet money uh, volume. Yeah. All right. But most of the payments at the e-commerce are made by credit cards. Yes. Uh, for this uh, reason, we developed the uh, the face recognition payment. 
it's something that we can use. You can use in a, a, every device that you have. It's something. It's uh, you can just create an account in two thousand in um, in two and a half minutes. After that, you in each site, website, or uh, mobile app that you are going that's supporting our system, you can uh, first create an account on this mobile app or uh, on web on website. You don't have to register anywhere. And uh, the second, you can. Uh, uh, you don't have to repeat this procedure. It's something like one account for everything that we're using. Maybe I, I was not clear on the, on the picture. How would I put real money there? Yeah, I have I have Swiss franc. In my uh, they, they they just have to connect their bank account. Okay. With the uh, with the uh, we are connecting to API to the banking of the of the bank bank uh, with the PSD issue. I don't know if you want to know what what it is. And uh, we are just connecting to them. We are uh, uh, taking the what? There's still going to be transaction you... fees when I send the money from from the bank, right? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. And what about the businesses? The businesses are going to be receiving money on their accounts in a similar way. They they have to. Uh, they have something like it's similar to a wallet. Uh, they. Are receiving the money on the uh, on our wallet after that they have uh, uh, two ways the first way is to uh, put off the circuit the money on their transfer the money on their, their direct bank account it's, it will be it will keep something like 24 hours and or the second way we will we'll release to them the Ivan and they, it will be a, a bank transfer cheap bank transfer for businesses did you test it with potential customers on the business side, whether they are ready to, to use the scheme? Yes, we talk it to many uh, e-commerces, especially for uh, for retailers. It's really it's really uh, useful for them because they um, it's cheap and it's uh, they have a lot of uh, problems with the, the, the classical transactions because uh, it's uh, in, have a serious impact on their mar margins on it. It's something that increases their margins and they're really to, they're ready to use it, yeah. Cool, thanks, yeah. And do you have uh, currently any paying customers or just uh, first uh, tests made away? Uh, we just have some uh, letter of intent for it, that we are talking to the customer, they are uh, ready to to use it and they are ready to test it and uh, that's all. This is because we have started in uh, what is this? It's in uh, April. We registered now. We registered the company in uh, we registered the first company we registered in Italy. Now we are transferred in London uh, because Italy is not a really good environment for fintech. <laughs> okay. And uh, okay, you're welcome. Any more questions to flip? Uh, it, it's more of a comment, really, rather than anything else, um, or a question. You can answer it if you wish. But you, you, you've provided some addressable market, and um, usually when companies know exactly how big the market is, the market is actually developed. Um, so that being said, as Vadim mentioned, there's a lot of com competitors. That being said, uh, how should one view your type of business? Can it be still a regional business or is this space a winner takes all type of business? Can, is your idea you repeat? door to door to do deals? Can you, uh, can you repeat please the question because uh, we have a bad audio. Okay, so is the, your route to market is mm -hmm. this the type of business where it's a winner takes all, so like one or two platforms are going to actually dominate the market forever, or can it actually be a regional type of activity? Uh, um, so even though perhaps if you don't take over the world, you can still own Italy, Switzerland, or whatever other country. Uh, I don't think it's uh, it's a business that it's uh, one that we have two two big players and uh, <laughs> because it's uh, 
it's a really big, it's growing market. It's uh, we have different players with different focuses, with different verticals, and uh, it can be in, it can stay uh, in Italy, it can stay in uh, in Germany, it can stay uh, in uh, UK. It depends on uh, the, the, the customers and depends on the business what what their needs. Who satisfies that better the needs of the business? Because each business, each business need, have different needs. You, if you have retail, you have some needs for payments. If you uh, have uh, SaaS, it's different uh, need for payments. Uh, some recurrent, and uh, it's not uh, only one player that keeps all. Because this market too, is too big to to only one player, I think. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Flap. And um, I want to give the word uh, to another startup founder from UK, the company Revain. And uh, the founder and CEO of Revain is Grigor Aproyan. So Grigor, please make it yours. And um, if you have presentation, you can share your screen. Hello, thank you for your time. Nice to meet you. My name is Grigor. I'm a co-founder and the CEO in Revain. So yes, I have a presentation I will show it a little bit. So uh, we started our project in 2017 from only idea. Uh, we created a review platform based on blockchain and artificial intelligence systems. So uh, right now we have um, more than 300,000 users on the platform. And we can tell that we are in top number one platform about review in crypto industry where the people can write a review about some crypto project, crypto wallets, uh, crypto exchange, et cetera. Uh, we started our uh, project because we have a, a lot of problems in this market, such as like, a, can no one can be sure about their review after, for example, one year, because, uh, or some time, yes, because every company is like a, some competitors that we have, like a Yelp, Trustpilot, Amazon, everybody. Uh, they can do anything with your review because it is their data. They can change it, they can delete it, and etc. But we can provide a service like for the, our authors where they can be sure that their review will be in safe place, which, which is very interesting for uh, getting in touch in uh, the future. So uh, we have our own artificial intelligence system, which is scanned before publishing each review. So what does it mean? Yes, you need to understand. We are working in blockchain industry, which and, uh, uh, and if we publish any review, we couldn't do anything or, or we couldn't change it or we couldn't delete it. So uh, the moderating of the review before publishing is very important. So we uh, try to use some IBM, uh, what's an uh, artificial intelligence which doesn't work for scanning. So we decided to create our own and we created it and uh, we have our own artificial intelligence system which analyzes the quality of the review. If the uh, quality will be good, uh, you will be allowed to publish it. So uh, very interesting system for the future also uh, because uh, when you get a very good review and you have a good content, like you are the author, you will have opportunity to have a some uh, rewarding system from the platform. For this, we will use our uh, own initial token, which you can exchange on your uh, on your uh, on the platform to trading token and withdraw. So it means that we are a really global platform. We uh, we are working, and we can uh, do rewarding in everywhere in the world using the tokenization system. So uh, right now we have a more than uh, uh, 29,000 already written reviews uh, and about 7,000 active authors on the platform. And uh, we, uh, on the platform, we have a lot, about 100 uh, leader of minds who are really good in uh, like an author business. So, and uh, we, I can show you how we're growing. Yes, from the time from 2017. And we need to understand that we are working in internet, yes, and uh, also in the world we have a pandemic situation with, and uh, people were interesting to, uh, to have some services at home. So that's why you can see that in 2020, uh, we have a very good growth in, uh, in uh, amount of review. Also, the platform works with 50 partners plus uh, companies who can integrate our uh, widget 
which allow them to use our technology on your on their side. So it's very important for them to get uh, some opportunity to for their customers to write a review or read a review on the platform. So uh, for the two years we was uh, working in crypto industry and uh, now we are top number one platform there. And um, what about like uh, on the start of this year we get the research we done a research from the three biggest platform which is uh, Trustpilot, Yield Platform, and I recommend, and we get that. 80% of their traffic comes from 20% of their categories. So we decided to add this exactly 20% of category to our platform. So we are not only crypto right now. One week ago, we done update of our platform and we added these categories. And uh, we see very good potential in this because you need to understand if we took some like about 300,000 users in crypto, and uh, which is very, very small, um, uh, small community. Uh, we have a very good opportunity to have a much more like a million users in classic business, like uh, internet, uh, health and beauty categories, like uh, finance, films, uh, tourism, uh, gaming sector, and etc. cetera. So uh, also on the platform, we need to understand that we are the global one. So right now we don't have any competitor in global things because we have some competitors like a, uh, Yelp, who, which is like a US company, uh, only US based for customers like a trust pilots. And also we have one good uh, thing that we are trying to get exactly the review, not like as very short, like uh, on the most of the platforms, it will be like a very good content where we're trying to find a very good opportunity to, to, uh, to tell the customers that you can find good information about any products. So uh, also you know, we, on the platforms, uh, we have a very good and interesting system of monetization, like a banner ads, uh, sponsor results, uh, referral links, data analyze, which is like will be, for example, you have a lot of reviews about your shop or some of your product. And we will create artificial intelligence, will, which will analyze uh, exactly, uh, for, for example, all 1,000 reviews about your product. And he, he will tell you what is good in your product, what is bad, and why it is in this case. So uh, also on the platform, uh, as I mentioned before, we have uh, some systems like for rewarding reviews. And uh, in uh, one uh, very important part of the platform, it will be like a listed company, which will have a opportunity to have the, their premium accounts. And they, on the platform, you couldn't delete it. For example, if some company don't like any review and they don't agree, they will have opportunity to answer from the company account on this review. Also, it will be hashed in blockchain or updated the review. So, uh, and the, on the platform, uh, we're gonna have a, some uh, uh, sharing re review system. What is mean? Uh, for example, you open some shop where you are selling iPhones, and you don't have any uh, reviews about this product. But on the platform, there are, for example, one hundred reviews about this. And when you do integration of our widget, you will automatically collect this data on your platform. So it means that you don't need to have uh, some time to uh, to get, give your comment to, to, to write a review about your product. So it will be helpful for you to sell some products some, uh, and uh, some services. Uh, and uh, about our team, we are uh, more than 40 people working in our company and uh, like 90% of us is uh, technical guys. Yes, so we are based in Russia, uh, a little team in China, uh, in Emirates, and uh, right now uh, we are focusing for uh, uh, to get supported as our new categories, yes, and to have more customers on the platform. So uh, we need uh, more product development uh, acceleration. Uh, we need a, a legal structure where we have now, but we want to have it better, like with more IP, etc. Uh, also, we want to have a, um, some uh, a sales department on the platform, which will sell the widget integration in the future. 
and uh, and we want to have, of course, worldwide marketing for us. Uh, a little bit about founders. Yes, we are two founders, me and uh, uh, Rinat Arslanov, who is the CEO. Uh, so we, uh, both of us, have a lot of businesses in a very good background uh, before. Uh, for my side, I have a very good uh, education in Russia, and uh, I work in banking system. I was working also in investment programs, and uh, uh, right now our main goal is our platform. So this uh, this deck is not updated. So uh, also some part par part of our. Team, yes, uh, we are uh, the tech team based 100% only in Russia, and we have here a very good and strong community for this. So, uh, and for requires, yes, we are looking for uh, $7.5 million for 20% of the company uh, equity. Uh, also, I want to mention that before we never have uh, any rounds. Uh, this is the first time when we are ready to sell uh, some part of the company. So, thank mm -hmm. you. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so what is your current business model? How the service and the you as a company and money? Uh, right now on the platform, we don't have any revenue. Yes, because uh, we are collecting users. Yes, and uh, we in our mention, uh, in our goal is yes, we want to raise for example, 1 million users on the platform and start the monetization system which is like it will be banner ads sponsor results on the platform referral links uh, some premium accounts uh, widgets and a revenue uh, sharing model so uh, to, 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 to to be in uh, numbers it's like a, for example now our competitors collecting from five to six dollar revenue per month from one user Yes, in our uh, financial model, we took from two to four dollars per one user in one month. So you can uh, ha uh, and it will be it will be very good revenue even from one million two million users on the platform per month. Uh, right, I have a question. As I understood correctly, uh, uh, the main uh, the main difference of uh, your solution. Uh, in comments that you build it uh, on um, in a way that uh, it's it's hard to make the fake comments, right? That's uh, the idea of uh, the user technology. Uh, the idea was uh, never you, uh, the, uh, the, that you cannot never change it or delete it, this review. Yes, because you know, for example, you write some review on any platform, and the company paid to the platform to change it or delete it, this review. This is first. Second, we also have a, a artificial intelligence system which analyzes the quality of the review and we never publish bad quality of the review. Even don't, uh, another platform don't have this opportunity. And uh, one more thing, we help and we want to collect exactly leader of minds on the platform, like a YouTube. Yes, uh, on YouTube you have, uh, for example, one million channels and but only five or percent of them will have some revenue from their channel, like our, uh, who are the author. The same will be on our platform. We don't need too much content. We need very good review and very good content. And uh, uh, this is like a main difference between them. Right. Also, so, yeah. Uh, sorry. The question is: Is it the problem of the customers or uh, the websites that? Uh, the, the comments uh, can be changed and other solutions for, for both of them yes because uh for for example for the reader it's very important to see where the reviews are very safe um, the, like 100 percent safe place and it will be a uh, very good content for them and useful product for uh companies it will be important to show their customers that they are ready to have a feedback in clear way which is well, which will help them to have some extra sales. Okay, thank you. Can you can you help me understand? Um, 
so in the past, you guys uh, 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 capitalized this, you developed the product with your own capital? Uh, yeah. In two, yes. Yeah, and, and um, from that's what I understood. And now, uh, and you don't have revenues, but you have a product that's been tested um, uh, uh, without monetizing. And now you wish to um, raise seven and a half million for pre-money of 30 million. And uh, so the issue is, um, why not, can you, can you demonstrate that you can make money uh, um, uh, on your own at, at the moment, just base hits, little hits um, without raising capital? Um, first of all, in 2017, we had a crowd sale, yes, where we raised like $10 million and we developed our platform when we have the roadmap to, to create it in two years, but we finished everything in one year. So we successfully finished everything uh, for this. And uh, about uh, why we don't uh, turn on any monetization now, because uh, only one week ago, we have uh, done very big update of the platform, which will allow us to turn on monetization program. Uh, first thing. Second thing, uh, we was in crypto before, and now we want to collect new users in a uh, classic market. And in some time, uh, also, maybe we will decide with some partner who will uh, help us with this um, to create uh, to, and to, when it will be the best moment to start this monetization program. Because uh, I will be honest with you, I, we are not looking for just the money. Yes, we are looking for some smart money with some um, uh, companies who will help us to integrate our product in big, with big gamers. So as I mentioned before, we have 50 companies who are working with us, 50 platforms. And when you do integration of our widget, now we get 56% of traffic from there. So we need to have more integrations with some platforms who will, have, who, who, who will need to collect any reviews. So in this case, we will have a new users. After that, we will turn on commentization program. Okay, so just for clarity, you've already invested capital has been 10 million, correct? Yes, but not equity. It was uh, by crowd sales and token okay. sales. Uh, uh, ah, so ICO, okay, okay. Yeah, and do they have rights over your company or some revenue rights? Sorry? Do they have any rights over the core? itself no 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 nothing yeah of course because we had a roadmap for them to create the platform and everything is done and and 10 million has been spent yeah sure Basically. yes because uh, it's like uh, from 2017 till now okay understood yes Thank and you. we are one of the one of the companies in this industry who are still working very successful because 99 percent are not like the us Sure, sure, okay. Okay, thank you, Grigor. And uh, I want to give uh, the word uh, to the founder uh, of Enhanced Investments, company from Russia, but which is seeking funds to expand uh, to international markets, Kirill Kuznetsov. Kirill, your word. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Hi, Sharks. Uh, my name is Kirill Kuznetsov. I'm the founder and CEO of Enhanced Investments. As you probably know, we live in the era of negative real uh, interest rates. So uh, there is no sense in bringing your funds to bank accounts and really millions of investors join the stock market, but don't know what to do after that. Robo advisory market is huge uh, and booming, but robo advisors just uh, are just part of the answer because they are mostly low returns and mostly black box for investor. And what we do is the platform for automated investment analysis where the clients can join one of our automated strategies or conduct their own analysis. 
very much like UVC guys do, the platform uh, allows you to understand which companies are the best in terms of their growth trajectory, their valuation, their cash generation, and so on. We have uh, coverage of over uh, 1,000 companies, US uh, and globally, and have uh, four hour automated strategies that are working and performing really well. For example, uh, our strategies uh, are showing over 20% uh, annual return, which is uh, confirmed uh, by the independent uh, portals uh, in Russia, which ranks over, uh, over 40 broker, uh, brokerage and analytical firms, and we are the first uh, in returns of our investment ideas. Our strategies uh, as well are placed on the largest Russian brokers marketplaces and gain some traction there. More than that, our traction is really strong. We are growing both in terms of uh, retail subscriptions to our uh, portal and in, ter in terms uh, of uh, our assets under management. For example, just in the last couple of months, uh, some affluent uh, clients joined our strategies, uh, to name a few, managing, one of the managing partners of Boston Consulting Group invested uh, two, uh, over $2 million in these strategies. One of the Sputnik Group uh, shareholders, who is a multi-millionaire, invested first $2,500 uh, uh, dollars. Owners of IT companies, of uh, clinics chains, uh, and uh, some other of development companies also invested uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of dollars in our strategies. Um, and uh, it really works that well because of the science. We have fully operational IT backbone, starting with the. Uh, uh, data gathering, like uh, companies' financials, uh, like stock prices, uh, currency prices, and uh, some factors to uh, not just to analyze the past, but the current state of the companies. For example, commodity prices for commodity players, web traffic for web companies, uh, app download, downloads, and so on. After that, we apply our proprietary analytical frameworks to understand which companies are the best in terms of their growth and their valuation. Um, the, we also develop some uh, uh, machine learning model, which, for example, uh, first analyzes how usually the same companies are valued. And secondly, second application of ML in our business is that we try to read and understand what the companies are delivering in their press releases. And uh, finally, the system uh, calculates potentials of the companies, calculates the optimal portfolio structure, and uh, executes the trades on real accounts that we mentioned. And so uh, we have uh, this score of understanding the company's valuation and. Uh, their potentials, executing the trade and delivering it, them to our clients' accounts, and then uh, notifications of our subscribers who can uh, watch and analyze uh, on uh, uh, information on our portal, or can join our strategies, for example, through a Telegram message, uh, messenger where they receive real-time notifications on our transactions. We uh, earn money from multiple of, uh, of streams. Uh, the largest are subscription to our portal, which is $30 per month. Uh, uh, and uh, asset management, we earn 50% uh, uh, of our, we take performance fee of 15% of from our clients. More than that, we receive cashback from uh, our broker partners for bringing our clients to them. Uh, and also, we have some revenue streams for largest brokers placing uh, our strategies on their, uh, among their clients and uh, bringing money from the clients to, to us. 
And uh, more than that, our unit economy is really great. Uh, for example, uh, we spent uh, on marketing less money that, uh, than we already achieved in revenue. And uh, if we speak about our portal, the retention uh, is growing. For example, just a couple of months before it was 40%, now it's 60%, 60%. And we, tell, we uh, expect it to, it to further increase. Um, our team combines a strong expertise in corporate finance, private equity, IT development, uh, trading, and scientific research. And I think we are the only team uh, who combines uh, this uh, amount of competences from uh, different spheres, which uh, differentiates us from all the other players in the market. So we have uh, a really huge and growing market. We have a great team and we feel that we can grow really a lot. Success that I have told you about was uh, achieved with just three people in core team. We haven't uh, yet built uh, the sales function. We have uh, increasing uh, our uh, from our existing clients. We have a lot of uh, clients in Russia more to catch because there are, there is no other such product as uh, we offer. And of course, we have uh, a huge potential in global market. So uh, we are raising 1 million, uh, we are profitable, we, are, we have our funds managed uh, by the strategy. But still we believe that with the uh, external money and uh, more importantly with the, uh, with the right uh, smart money partner, we can uh, enter the global markets and scale really rapidly. So I welcome you to join us on our ride and our mission to serve the unserved investment community and to bring the most sophisticated uh, investment strategies to them and to allow them to execute investment analysis of uh, public markets. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kirill. Mikhail, I see that you want to ask questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my first question is about your uh, about your focus and about your revenue. So um, as uh, I, I went to your website uh, to in, in, in chanceinvestment.com, it's written you are uh, working as uh, uh, you're doing consulting, you're doing advising, and um, and uh, in, in in your presentation you spoke more about. Uh, about the platform. So uh, you are showing this revenue. Is it revenue uh, which you get from the platform or you get together with uh, from advising and consulting? So uh, on this slide, you can see that, uh, for example, in the last month, we earned about uh, $20,000 uh, from subscription to our portal and our signals. And the uh, other part is what we earn from, uh, for example, this uh, 11,000 calculated assumed revenue from asset management uh, that we charge for, from our asset management. So we do both. Uh, I think that finally more money would be in asset management. Still, uh, we believe that our platform is a good way to uh, spread the word about our product. Uh, so, uh, and uh, to let clients know about it, uh, because uh, the clients really love our platform and uh, our strategies as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, for, for the 1 million, uh, how much equity is that equate to? Currently we want to, uh, uh, give 20% uh, equity for uh, this uh, amount. Okay. So, uh, as I said, uh, the mostly, and what is more important for us than uh, valuation, uh, which I uh, firmly believe can be higher, uh, uh, is uh, the right the right partner. So, 
this is in a way um, a slightly different type of company um, than let's say in the typical tech world. However, um, uh, if you have a sustainable strategy, uh, this is what I would do if I were you. I would use the 1 million, go to Switzerland, set up and establish a, 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 an entity, get a, a, um, a regulatory approval. Then I would also, um, let's say, raise a bit more money, not for the equity, but um, it, what you need is to open a fund, a registered fund that's public, run it for a year. And if it's doing well, yeah, then you have a sales team that goes knocking on door, doors and raises money. And or you have a retail license uh, within Europe where you can actually um, advertise this, yeah? But you need this, uh, 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 but the fund itself is actually critical for you to, if you wanna go outside of Russia. Uh, yeah, actually it can be the fund structure or it can be a, like a more a kind of FinTech structure. For example, there are some not that advanced, but comparable companies uh, in US like T10 Invest, where you uh, offer uh, your investment solutions to the clients and they can, uh, you can make it inside the fund or you can make it in the managed account structure. For example, managed accounts is what we do. And it is also working structure. Uh, and their results, for example, have been audited uh, as well. And uh, the, we might do the fund at some point. Uh, more, the legal structure can be uh, different. It can be in Switzerland or we will be thinking about structuring it in US and getting the registered investment advisor status in US. What we currently are thinking uh, in terms of our strategy uh, is uh, to offer this uh, neat uh, mobile app that would uh, where you would be able to join our strategies to understand how they work to conduct your investment analysis to split your portfolio uh, among our strategies that which you already can do or to add uh, stocks of your preference so uh, we believe that uh, if we build this in uh, such uh, fintech way we can uh, achieve higher capitalization Still, we don't exclude the opportunity to set up uh, the fund uh, along the way. Um, just, just for you to um, know, in the UK, there's a robo-advisor, I forget the name, but what I do know from the last reports, and they've been around for like 10 years and raised a whole bunch of money, they still don't make any money. Yeah, they still burn cash. And they have assets like 7 billion, um, but their just fees are just too low. Yeah. So I, I, what, what, what I'm getting at is I, I think you need to analyze the market. Don't because you're sitting in Russia where you have a low, lower regulatory uh, threshold. Um, and it's a different world when you go to the U S and Europe. Yeah. Thank you very much for, for coming. So, uh, on the one hand, this, um, uh, robot advisor that you are referring to, uh, yeah, they are, <laughs> unfortunately, the, uh, most of them are really loss making, but uh, in part, it is because they're growing rapidly. And for example, this robo advisor has a valuation of about 4 billion, uh, if I remember it correctly. And all the valuations are quite good. For example, Sequoia just invested uh, to $20 million uh, in a young robo advisor uh, launched, launched by two. Uh, uh, 19 year, years old uh, guys uh, uh, because it is uh, based on machine learning and it is uh, working good. Uh, and I believe that we can be more profitable than traditional robot advisors because uh, the strategies that we have are, are really good uh, and uh, they are performing uh, really well and uh, we charge our clients much more than a traditional 
robo advisors, uh, especially for these uh, high return uh, strategies. So, for, for example, we charge this uh, performance fee 15%, which is uh, higher than traditional robo advisors charge, but still uh, clients are willing to pay it. And the other uh, part uh, is that we uh, receive this uh, cashback from uh, from uh, the brokers that we partner with. Just FYI, in Europe, you can't do that anymore. Uh, can't to receive cashback from brokers, right? Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I think yeah. as of 2014, something yeah. like that. Still, uh, as you probably know, for example, Robinhood uh, earns a lot of money for selling information to the uh, broker house. So uh, there are uh, such uh, ways to monetize as well. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have two more startups left for today. Uh, Kirill, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, okay. Um, I want to give the word uh, to the founder of Experience Era from Lithuania, Artur Romanov. Artur, are you here? Yes, hi. Hello. Hi, let me share my screen. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, do you see it? Right. So, <clears throat> we are Experience Era and we are a Coursera for internships. The problem for, uh, for companies that companies cannot ensure that all candidates have baseline skills for a position, there is no effective screening and testing to identify a talent, and there is no exclusive pool of trained candidates for instant hires. The problem for students is that number of internships is seven times less than number of students, and 100, uh, 180 million students struggle to get relevant experience uh, to, to develop in demand skills. Months can be spent on job applications with a very low useful output yield. And looking into the future, 800 million jobs are to be replaced by automation by 2030. Experience Era is a web platform providing open online self-paced virtual internships co-designed with companies to all students and workforce, helping HR of companies to identify and attract trained talent at scale using our analytics and AI system so that companies firstly can upskill candidates with in-demand skills, uh, secondly, can identify talent before they start working in a company, thirdly, can get exclusive pool of talent for instant hires, and fourthly, can attract talent. While students, firstly, can discover professions, secondly, get education and experience in the industry during the open online self-paced virtual internships on the platform when they want in the areas they want and from anywhere in the world. Thirdly, can get connections with companies and fourthly, can get employment remotely or on site. We had interviews with HR, directors and education experts. Four companies are interested and MAUs are pending. While for students, we experienced the problem firsthand, interviewed potential users who confirmed the problem is important and the solution is a must have have initial signups to the platform and target audiences following us on social media. Our business model is that we sell online certification programs, each at 60 US dollars. Partner companies who are our early adopters mm -hmm. get an attractive percentage of gross revenue from the certificates and later adopters would pay additional subscription starting from 3,500 US dollars per year. There are free to audit options for students and our prospective B2B partners are leading companies worldwide. Our total addressable market is at about 13 billion US dollars, growing at 8% per year, and is expected to reach approximately 18 billion US dollars in seven years. We have some direct and indirect competitors. However, our solution is focused the most on experiential education and provides the highest impact for employment of students and workforce and the highest impact for HR of companies. Our go-to-market strategy is that we firstly focus on Europe and the USA. For B2B, we partner with leading European, UK, and US companies by contacting them directly, 
While for B2C, we use both paid and organic digital marketing channels to drive traffic of students to the platform. We have developed a prototype and have incorporated in the UK. In the, number, in the, in the next month, we're working on developing MVP and partnering with companies. Right. Our financial potential could be described in the way uh, that online learning is a proven way of learning shown by such unicorn companies like Coursera, Udemy, and Udacity, which can be brought to internships by Experience Era. We are also an impact-driven company focusing on quality online education, stimulation of economic growth, promoting equal opportunities, empowering all people with remote and virtual experiences, and making partnerships for the mission. We are a team of two co-founders who work in investment banking, sales and trading, full-stack development, data analytics, with amazing education in finance, engineering, and uh, computer science. We are open for partnerships with leading companies worldwide. We are currently raising 150,000 US dollars and are also asking for introductions to corporates. This would be used over seven months for further development to run the pilot and to make more partnerships. Please contact me at arthur at experiencera.com to transform the internship industry together. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Any questions to Arthur? Mm. Maybe some feedback? Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, thank you for uh, your presentation. Um, you've mentioned that you are uh, building now your uh, MVP, minimum viable product, right? Yes. And uh, who are you? Uh, what kind of customers are you planning uh, to to have as as a first customers? Yes. Yeah, so uh, currently, uh, four companies in the US, the UK, and Europe are interested, and uh, we are seeking partnerships exactly for a pilot project. And the pay will be ready about in a month, and we will need exactly an investment to for some further development and to run a pilot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have really interesting products uh, and uh, interesting model. So um, it will be great to come back to and to talk about, um, uh, to talk about uh, maybe some things, to, some things uh, when you're gonna have first clients and first, uh, first revenue. From, from, from our side. Okay, great, thank you. What's... Don't stop, Arthur, it's typical case. Investors need clients, traction, revenue. That's um, yeah. that's typical story. Oscar, yeah, what... but in general, I just wanted to make a comment because that's, I think, similar to the topic we've been discussing over the last month or so. Startups themselves, at least, and I'm speaking from a narrow point of view of IT, but they're really struggling with finding uh, talent for sales and marketing and for programming for sure because like there are tons of vacancies and then on the same side on the other hand you're saying that there are not enough uh, internship positions etc so there's definitely something here but making it work that's just challenging because you need to convince companies that they can work with interns and then you need to connect them somehow. But the idea is definitely a good one because it will help both, both parts. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are different situations in different countries, but I would say that the developed countries are the most affected, especially now and even before the crisis. Yeah, right. I mean, in the UK, let's say in the UK, only 7% of students get internships. Why? Because uh, uh, companies uh, actually need to pay to hire the interns, right? And that's the problem for students because when they come to, uh, to an employer, they say, where is your experience? But you can kind of get experience in the first place. And that's the problem which we are solving. Question uh, um, on the corporate side. So you, you want 150,000 for seven months, I, I I guess the plan. I, I presume the plan is that um, uh, the 150 allows you to do the MVP, and then you do a, a proper round after. Is that is that the idea? Uh, so the most funds will be spent on running the 
uh, the pilot and especially on marketing to drive the traffic of, stu of paying customers. Okay, so 150 used to do the MVP. MVP and to run a pilot. Yeah, okay. And what does that 150 get you? So it will be used for the test of the uh, what I mean is, uh, how much how, how much equity does one get for that? Oh, so our uh, approximate pre-money valuation is 1.5 million. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Vadim, you want you. to ask something or not? No, I just want to add and agree with uh, Mikhail that we will be very happy to see you after first traction and uh, discuss the results and uh, discuss the next round probably. Great. Okay, thank you. Uh, hurry up with the clients and traction. And uh, the last but not least uh, for today uh, is uh, another female founder or co-founder, Alina. Alina is co-founder of QP, startup from Estonia. Alina, mic is yours. Hello, everyone. Thanks for waiting until the last Shark Tank pitch today. Um, so my name is Alina Kornienko. I'm the COO and co-founder of QP. And I'm going to now share my screen with you. Just tell me if you, if you see it. Yes, right now, yes. Great. Great. So what is QP? QP is a digital payment solution consolidating your bank cards and accounts. And at QP, we've gone further than Google Pay and Apple Pay to develop an AI solution that chooses the right card at the moment of payment. And before I tell you all the story about QP, I would like to highlight that we are profitable, we have paying clients, we're fully established in Europe, fully licensed, and we're now simply um, expanding to Latin America, Asia, US, and Africa. So so at these pandemic times at QP, we're closely working on improving and, and expanding worldwide contactless payment solutions and contactless IBAN account opening within our application. It's hyper secure, hyper fast, only five minutes, and you get access to all kinds of financial services with digital and traditional currencies. So QP was founded back in 2017 by a group of tech enthusiasts with over 15 years in top financial and top IT management of companies with over 1 billion annual revenue. And we have previously realized uh, different e-commerce and financial projects with my great co-founders. So after a successful launch and development of a unique payment solution, gathering all types of banking operations with both e-money and traditional assets within one decentralized application, we're now launching a revolutionary payment, financial and social solution, not only for banking cards consolidation, but also an AI-based recurring payment expenses, investment, automatization, gift cards, a secondary market, and also cost planning solution. Um, so since the launch of our app back in 2018, we have uh, expanded to such important European regions as Germany, UK, Italy, Spain, Norway, Denmark, and Poland. We're extremely present in CIS countries, in Russia, and we're now expanding to Latin America, to Africa, to Asia, and later in 2022 to the US, hopefully. So um, that's something about the market, the market size, if you would want to to ask me about that. We know our position, we know our future on the market, and we're just heading uh, accordingly to our timeline to those numbers I'm showing you now. So as I've told you, we are fully profitable. And despite the pandemic, we have uh, improved our metrics uh, since January this year. And our transaction volume for 18 months of 2020 is 32.3 million uh, euro. Our revenue is over uh, 500,000 and our monthly expenses are around 70 to 80K and we're fully funding ourselves each month. Um, and our uh, revenue also helps us, for example, to launch recently our 
uh, prepaid cars emission. The first cars would be delivered uh, to our EU uh, customers in Q1 2021. We have launched uh, the process of EMI license obtainment by ourselves. Uh, we are also now at the final stage of the implementation of consolidation services that I've been previously speaking. Uh, and we're now uh, on our way to the Latin America and we're also improving our digital acquiring solution for um, emergence merchants and for monetization of inner resources of uh, mobile, for example, gaming and other mobile apps. So uh, for now, we are seeking uh, 6.7 million for 20% share. Uh, and that's, you can see on my slide, how we're going to use those funds. Uh, we have done all this job that I've just um, shown you uh, since 2017 with only uh, a small investment of 1.7 million from private investors. And I would be extremely happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Alina. Any questions to Alina? Yeah. Um, thank you for a great pitch. Is any forecast where the uh, money will bring you? Any forecast for the new market? Um, I think... I'm gonna look at my slides. Yes, of course. Uh, so at this slide, you can see what we are going to be in 2024 when fully, um, fully expanded to those regions that I've just mentioned. Uh, so is this is gonna be the only round between, uh, well, this time and 2024? Um, 2024? To be honest, I'm not sure for now, but I would also love to say that we're now expanding and doing all this job with our own funds and with our revenue. So um, in case we receive all those all those funds that I've shown, so 6.7 million, yeah, we will be fully able to uh, grow until 2024, those metrics that I've just shown you. Um, question on... on uh... Client Corporate, acquisition right? costs. Sorry. Client client acquisition costs. Um, so from is it is it that you so far are um, expanding in your own region and you went into Russia, but if you go into other parts of Europe or U.S., I I imagine those are different types types of figures. Actually, we're already fully present in different uh, European regions, not only in Russia and CIS countries. I've mentioned uh, countries like France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Denmark, Portugal, UK, of course. So the prices that I show are mostly for the European customers because Europe is our domestic market. We are a European company and a European project. Okay, thank you. So is it correct on the figures you plan to grow in thousand times yes. in three years? Yes, because uh, we're growing every time we're implementing new services uh, and the figures that I, I've shown you for the last 11 months, uh, they, are, uh, they were made by us, by implementing new services and new features. And as uh, in, the, in the three future years, we'll be implementing lots of stuff that are extremely needed on the market. This would enable us to uh, grow uh, these times. And I would also love to mention that as we are a transactional modal business, so we are earning on uh, every transaction on the fees that we set up. Uh, so more services we have, more fees we get. That's quite, I mean, that, that's reasonable. Um, and so you plan to grow because of new services, uh, but- and, and expansion, of course regional expansion and uh, new services. Okay, probably it, it's a bit longer talk and uh, we 
well, so would, it will be interesting to to look at detailed analysis of your clients and uh, well, past uh, month. Um, but thank you at this point. Thank you, Vadim. Other questions from investors to Alina? Anton, I, I guess you wanted to ask a question. Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, no, I actually, uh, I didn't want to ask a question, but I do want to follow up. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting for sure. Good to hear. So thank you very much, Alina. And I want uh, to thank all investors and all startups who found time and uh, spent this evening with us listening to pitches and pitching instead of uh, running, shopping and uh, buying some gifts and uh, presents for the holiday season. And I want to thank uh, those people who are watching us in YouTube and were watching during all this time. Uh, to uh, summarize, uh, just a reminder, all investors will receive today from our, us all the list of the presenting startups with the profiles, pitch decks, etc., all the needed information. And once you want an introduction with the founder, let us know and in my team will immediately assist you with this. Also, uh, one more investor was not presented here today. Uh, and maybe it is interesting for investors and for startups. We will also share with uh, him uh, the pitch decks. Uh, it is Gerald from 3VC, relatively new VC fund in Europe that uh, has exactly similar investment focus as all you guys here have. And uh, they also are strong in co-investments with uh, top tier VCs like Sequoia, etc. Uh, so if uh, uh, for the startups, we will share your pitch decks with them as well. And for investors, if you want to get introduction for potential co-investments, let us know. And uh, to summarize, I want uh, to ask um, the feedback from uh, investors here. Um, regarding uh, the startups, maybe you can give some advice on uh, what could be better in pitches for the next time or what was typical mistake or what should they pay attention to? Uh, let me start. Uh, first of all, Nelly and uh, in mind, thank you so much for uh, organizing such an event. It was a great pleasure to take part and to discuss with startups some uh, potential cooperation in such a way. So thank you so much. Um, and um, yeah, uh, speaking about uh, advices uh, for the startups, um, the first advice is uh, is advice for your pitches uh, to focus on uh, maybe two main things uh, because you have uh, limited time here, uh, limited time of pitching. So uh, please next time focus more about the problem uh, on clients uh, which you deliver your uh, your product uh, the problem you are solving and your current traction because almost all the questions were around it uh, so that, that that's my feedback but uh, all in all uh, it was a pleasure to talk with you and uh, i think let's stay in touch thank you Thank you very much, Mikhail. I think very relevant advice you shared. And um, anything from other investors? Vadim, Anton, Oscar? Yes. Um, just uh, uh, um, in terms of, of, of their pitching, only a few companies, as I recall, had a roadmap. So I think what's important to is, is, is it's basically to communicate what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. But what you're going to do, show me on the slide that uh, this is step one with this money, then step two with, with uh, 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 is this, step three is this, and so on. Because it, it, it shows you're organized, you know your business. Um, and as an investor, I, I see, ah, okay, I see the vision. I see some kind of conclusion. Yeah, so you're leading an investor to a conclusion. You're saying, I know the path, yeah, um, to success. Yeah, thank you, Oscar. And uh, I wish you heal very, very fast. And next time we will see your smiley face. Yeah. Thank you. Vadim? 
Ellie, thank you very much for organization. And uh, well, if uh, only a short advice for startups, uh, I understand that it's hard to, to pitch uh, all the idea and business model in three, five minutes, but if it's possible, it will be very helpful and valuable to add a slide with goal to market strategy, where to go, what to do, whom to hire and who are the first clients because the, the business doesn't grow just because uh, of new features or an office in a new country. And um, in the results of the round, I mean, uh, the, the value, the, uh, the amount of money of uh, the round, um, investor is always interested where it will bring the company to, what uh, uh, the, the results will be in six or 12 months uh, when you run out of money and uh, looking for the next round. So the not the five-year results, but the short-term results of this particular round. Just the first slide will be uh, very valuable. That's a good point, Vadim. Thanks a lot. Uh, actually, indeed, uh, some founders, they say, give me money and then we will see where it will bring us. So you guys should know better and tell to investors well where it will potentially bring you. Uh, Anton, uh, last but not least, your word, a recommendation, advice. Uh, no, I mean, the, the, the advice was good. It's like, yeah, shorten to the point. Sh show us the direction, show how you grow, whether it's in terms of money or in terms of number of customers. And that's that's the best thing that attracts investors. So that's probably narrow, but uh, that's, that's the best way to get the attention. And then we can dig into details. Uh, but I mean... For me personally, I, I get I, I get excited about technologies as well. So it was a very interesting session listening to, to you guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I think that's all for today. Um, we can all relax and go review the pitch decks. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we and investors, okay? I will go and follow up. And um, I wish you all a wonderful evening and talk to you soon. Cross my fingers for good deals after this Shark Tank. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.